Hello everyone, it's Ian here. In this tutorial, we're just going to go through how to make this scene. It's just a very simple scene with some concentric circles and some animating strokes. It'll introduce you to a couple of cool concepts in cavalry, like the duplicator and the stagger behavior. And so, and hopefully it's a platform from which you can build some more cool stuff. So let's get started. I'm just going to go to the file menu, a new scene. That's also command N or command D. Uh, you can also, uh, here's a useful shortcut, hit command D or control D on Windows to um, trigger don't save. So <clears throat> that done. Let's make a new ellipse. So you can do that just by uh, clicking and dragging to just draw one, or we can hold alt and click just to make one with the default size. Um, so with that done, we'll just select this and then we'll pop it into a duplicator so we get lots of them. And uh, to do that, you just select it and then you hold down Alt again and then you click on the duplicator uh, icon in the shelf. Now, uh, you see that the little tooltip here says hold Alt to hide the original shape. So that's what happens here. When you hold Alt, the original shape gets added to the duplicator and it's also hidden for you. So the duplicator UI loads up automatically, and by default the distribution is set to grid. Now in this menu there's lots of di other distributions, uh, Fibonacci and uh, linear, random, and you can distribute onto um, uh, shape edges and points and things. Uh, however, what we're interested in is point, which is the most boring distribution. All of the points are in exactly the same place, but that's fine for us. Uh, I'll just make five of them, and then I'm just going to close the duplicator UI for now and uh, we're left with the ellipse. Now, I'm gonna mess with the radius of the ellipse, but what I want is for each of these um, ellipses to be concentric. So I want them to just the, to the size of them to be staggered. So uh, you start with a small one and then they gradually get larger and larger and larger. You've guessed it, we have a, a behavior called stagger. So let's right click on radius and we'll go add behavior and then the behavior I'm gonna add is stagger. Now, um, I can load the stagger UI in a couple of ways because the UI doesn't load automatically when you add them via these um, right-click menus. I can either get to it by double-clicking on the connection here or I can double-click in the project window to load it. I'll double-click in the connection. It's a stagger UI. So the stagger distributes values between a minimum and a maximum and it distributes them according to a graph. So you can draw in this graph. So I could grab the handle here and draw a Bezier graph if I wanted to. Let's just reset that to default. Um, and... Uh, so I can mess with these values, but you'll see no difference in the viewport. And that's because all of these ellipse shapes are opaque. I want to make them slightly transparent. So I'm just going to slide the alpha in the material tab down so you can see what's going on here. Now, if we go back to the duplicator, I can mess with this count and you can kind of see what's going on. Okay. So let's have, say, this many circles. I'll go onto the stagger and I'll maybe increase the radius, maximum radius a bit, something like that. Okay, that done. Um, I'm just going to clear out the attribute editor uh, just to make it a bit simpler. So I'm going to hold down Alt again. We love that Alt key. And then I'm going to double click on the ellipse shape. And that clears out the attribute editor and just loads in the ellipse shape. So we'll go over to the fill tab. And I'm going to turn the fill off. So it's now completely invisible. And then I'll nip to the stroke tab and I'll turn on the stroke. So um, as you guess, it's pretty simple what we're going to do here. I'll increase the width. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to trim. And I'm going to check trim, which turns on path trimming, obviously, and then I'll animate the end trim like so. So I'm going to animate it at frame zero from uh, 0%. And then on frame 40, what we'll do is I'll just, I'll just put this up to 100. So that's our animation. It's amazing. And I'll change the cap style to round. Okay, so there we go. Uh, now I want each of these um, strokes to have a different color. So this is really super easy. Uh, we've got lots of um, library palettes in Cavalry. We ship with quite a few. Um, so you can preview them in uh, in the menu. Um, this one's fine. And so I'm just going to click on the options menu here and go down to create array from palette. And this makes a color array based on this little palette. So I'm going to then just simply drag the connection from the color array header. I'm going to drag that into stroke color, which just gives each of these strokes a different color. And uh, by default, that's what happens. Uh, you can turn off auto index if you want, and you can just give them a specific color if you want. Uh, but I quite like the effect of auto index. In fact, if you uncheck auto index and you right click on index, what you can do is actually use a behavior like um, random, say. So if you want each of them to have a random color from the array, you could use the random uh, behavior. Uh, but we'll use auto index for now. Okay, so uh, that's done. Here's our animation at the moment. Okay, cool. So the next thing we need to do is make these kind of animate one by one. And we do that using a time offset. And the time offset is on the duplicator. So a few nodes in Cavalry have time offset. Uh, I think um, the, the sub mesh behavior and the connect shape and even trails have time offset. 
So what we'll do is we'll right click on time offset, we'll go add behavior and the behavior that we're after is stagger. So let's hit stagger. See immediately we've had an effect. I'm gonna load the uh, time offset stagger UI and then um, the problem here is that by default, um, the maximum is giving us things starting early. Well, we don't want that. We actually want things to start late. So I'm just going to wind this back, say 10 frames, which means that our animation happens like this. Okay, that's cool. So that's nice and easy. Um, we can do You could do all sorts of fancy things, like if you wanted to, um, you could animate the travel while these things were coming on, or you could, um, in fact, you could stagger that if you wanted to, that would be cool. Um, and yeah, so there's our little animation. Now, I also, uh, I think it's a bit abrupt when these things appear, so let's just um, uh, animate the width as these things come on as well. So I'll set the keyframe on say frame uh, five. You can jump forward five frames by holding Command on the Mac, Control on Windows, Shift and the right arrow. So that just frame stepping in five frames. If you don't, if you want to go one frame, just don't hold Shift down. Uh, so I'll hit key to keyframe the width at that point. Then I'm just going to go backwards to frame zero and then hit zero. So there's a keyframe of zero to uh, sixty odd. So there you can you can see the strokes animating on right now okay cool so that's kind of our animation and um yeah you can you, you could just take this and um start just start adding behaviors in random places and see what happens basically so for example on the width here which is animating um instead of animating the width i'm just going to select that channel and hit the delete key so it's no longer animated um i'm going to right click on width and i'm going to go add behavior and i could say add a random behavior which is going to give each of these strokes a random width so between zero and say 60. So they're now all different widths like that. Um, if you if you wanted something that wasn't like that, so for example, I mean, you wanted a random width, but you could say that, you, I mean, you could then plug, say, a noise into the maximum on the random width. And it just goes on and on and on. You could just keep going forever, just adding behaviors and things just to make completely bizarre and um, amazing, um, uh, well, yeah art animations. So let's say, uh, for example, let's add noise in here. So noise is going to mess up because by default its width is um, set to minus 10, which is not valid. So we'll set that to zero and then set that to say 60 again. And then when I play this back, you can see that the, the width is now animating according to a noise pattern. And then you can mess with all the noise settings or you could plug things into the noise settings if you wanted to. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like how you get going just with a very simple scene in Cavalry and an example of using the duplicator, the stagger behavior, and then how you can start playing to create very mad things. <laughs> okay, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.